morning guys, it's about 5 a.m. One more project to work on before our little trip coming up here, so. Let me show you what I got on mine. You guys remember our good old buddy and friend, Mr. Meridine Heater? We used this in the shelter for a little bit. Um, I've had it sitting on the shelf, not knowing what to do with it. Did some research on it, and guess what? It can be used as an oil cooler. That's something I didn't even know. So can the other one that we're currently using in the shelter. They double as a uh, heat exchanger for hydronics, or you can use them as a oil cooler. So we're gonna repurpose that instead of buying this stuff off Amazon that's cheap and flimsy. Um, had some more components come in. Got a uh, pressure relief valve. This is adjustable from 1500 PSI to 2500 PSI. Got a 50-50 flow valve. Uh, and it's got check valves in it. So basically, uh, you got one end and it splits the flow 50-50. And there can be no reverse flow. So one side will be steering, one side will be uh, air conditioning compressor. Um, let me do a drawing here and show you guys what I have in mind. Okay, so as many of you may remember, um, this is how we had our setting before. We went from the pump to the steering and then off of the steering, from the return side of the steering, we had a T going to uh, the solenoid and then through the AC hydraulic motor to the tank, return to the reservoir. Well, come to find out, the steering box has a 2400 PSI relief valve in it and if it's backed up it has nowhere to go so once the air conditioning compressor kicks on and it builds up pressure in the hydraulic system it's putting all that force on the steering box so um, I have never worked with hydraulics before in my life uh, to try and set up a system like this so I'm learning as uh, I go I did sit down and study a, uh, there's a really good website and I'll leave a link in the description on how, how hydraulics work and the hydraulic symbols and whatnot. But let me show you how we're gonna run it this time. And uh, this is after doing my own research. Um, so we're gonna start off again the same. We've got a pump coming off the motor and uh, after the pump, we have a flow 50, 50. And then off of that, we're gonna have both the steering box and uh, the AC compressor. And then over here we have a 2500 PSI uh, check valve or uh, pressure relief. And then of course we have our tank here. And then right here we've got our little cooler. A little Meridine cooler. So off of the pump, we're going to go into the 50-50, that's going to split it. The steering box. Coming off of the steering box. We're going into the cooler, the little Meridine cooler. And then that of course returns to the tank. Off of the 50-50, we come into the 2500 PSI pressure relief valve. Going into the AC compressor. The AC compressor hits the cooler and the cooler returns to the tank. So there's fail safes in this system. Um, your steering box has its fail safe and it's not interrupted. It's got uh, low pressure from here all the way to the tank. Same thing with the AC compressor. It's got low pressure from here to the tank. If the AC compressor locks up because they put too much refrigerant in it, which is what I'm thinking probably happened there's too much refrigerant in it. If it uh, gets liquid into the uh, compressor side of the AC system, that compressor will lock up and create tremendous amount of pressure in the uh, hydraulics. I'm thinking that might have been what happened.
But anyhow, I digress. Um, it's going to go through here and then into the cooler and then back to the tank. So from here down, the low is the low pressure side. So there shouldn't be any restrictions on the steering box or the compressor anymore. I've taken all the safety protocols. However, this is my fear. Um, since I'm reducing the flow to 50-50, I'm going to guess that the steering won't be as responsive at a low RPM. I could be wrong because there is a pressure regulator and recirculation on the factory OEM pumps that try to maintain a certain pressure. So one of two things is going to happen. The steering isn't going to work at all or the steering will work. It'll just have a reduced effect at lower RPM and then everything else will be fine. If that is the case, I can upgrade from a 50-50 to like an 80-20 or beyond that I can get a priority uh, valve which flows all of it through the steering box until it senses a demand on the AC compressor side. They're a little bit more expensive but I figured I'd give this a shot first since these have check valves back, uh, built into it and there's no backflow. So. I think the first thing I'm going to do is uh, take that little Maradine heat exchanger and get that uh, uh, mount fabricated for it and get it mounted somewhere. So that'll be the first thing we do this morning. So let's get started. I have to mention one thing guys. There's a three-way valve that I'm hopefully going to pick up this morning from the post office. That's going to be, let's see, where will it be? It'll be after this PSI, so basically right here. And so the three-way will actually go between the uh, AC compressor and the return. So what'll happen is the air conditioner will send a signal to the three-way, this side will close off, and then it'll go through to the cooler. So that's one component I forgot to tell you about. So there's not enough room behind the grill, but there is room right here. So somewhere in this area, I'm gonna mount this bad boy. All right, guys. Got cherry syrup everywhere again, but uh, show you the configuration. There's the pump there. We're coming off the pump. We're going into the 50-50. The 50-50, one side splits off to the stern box. Uh, one side splits off the pressure valve the pressure valve goes into the solenoid and then the solenoid turns on and off to power the compressor motor and then this crazy looking thing is the return line which comes up around over to here and then it goes back to the tank right there so called the post office this morning it was my lucky day got this box let's open it up pure luck I found this on eBay and he was offering uh, priority shipping so I could get it today this is a uh, 24 volt three-way So that'll replace the solenoid that I currently have. You've got a, probably goes in one and then comes out one or two. So it's got a spool valve in there that uh, switches with 24 volt. I'll have to figure out what goes where. But we'll get that set up, get that tied in the system and then it's time to test. All right guys, I spent the last two or three hours going through here and tidying this up the best I could with uh, all of the fittings and hoses that I had. Let's go over this one more time. So we've got the uh, pump feed coming into a 50-50 flow with no reverse flow available. There's uh, check valves in there. This is your uh, 2500 PSI check valve. That goes to the three-way valve. Uh, when the air conditioning's off, this port is blocked so it just goes right back to the return line and back to the uh, cooler 
So it goes into here and then that goes to the tank. So when the air conditioning turns on and it sends a signal, this valve is gonna change so this one will close, this one will open. That will feed the motor on the hydraulic side of the air conditioning compressor which will then compress the gases and do its thing. The system was way over pressurized, so I put way too much refrigerant in, which probably locked up the compressor, which is why the pressure went skyrocketing and it blew the power steering uh, block. So that's a huge mistake on my part. Uh, I should have known better than to stop to stop adding refrigerant. Um, other than that, I'm going to lower the cab, see what kind of clearance issues we have, test the system. Add some more supports possibly and then uh, I'm probably going to run uh, one more cable over here to the um, fan on this and what that'll do is I'll tie that into the relay that turns the compressor on so whenever this compressor turns on that fan turns on too so that should work out pretty good well guys I gotta be honest I'm really gun shy around Abel right now because of that explosion that we had on the steering box so just going one step at a time he does appear to be working the air conditioning is working the steering surprisingly works even at idle so that OEM pump is making up for the difference between um, the split between the air conditioning and the um, air and the uh, steering box the fluid coming into here is slightly warm but it's not like excruciatingly hot and then the return coming out is pretty cool so I'm still gonna run that circuit it'll help me uh, diagnose the air conditioning system when the compressor turns on and whatnot because the fan will turn on at the same time the compressor turns on but it appears that the system is working as it should i may have to recheck the refrigerant levels the air coming out is colder than ambient but with the system running it might have brought the pressure down a little bit so i'll have to check that um I think it's I think it's gonna work guys I I'd be kind of dumbfounded that uh, it wouldn't work right now if it doesn't uh, I've created an easy way to hook it just right back up to steering so if something happens and we're out and about uh, it's just one fitting and one hose that I need to change out and then just cap off the AC side so I'm thinking it's gonna work well I drove Abel 10 miles and uh, all the systems seem to be working fine. The steering works fine. Um, you can see uh, when you hook a can of refrigerant up to the uh, compressor, when the compressor turns on, it turns off. The little fan that uh, is on the uh, cooler that I put in is working just fine. The problem is, is it's 60 degrees out today, so it's really hard to put the correct amount of refrigerant in the system when it's cool out because there's uh, such a difference in uh, pressure in the uh, different temperature ranges so I'm gonna have to wait till it's like hotter out to fill it up uh, at the correct amount but it does seem to be working the compressor turns on seems to be uh, running just fine I, I touched all the fittings after the drive I had it on high the whole way over here and all the hydraulic lines are just warm they're not you know boiling hot or anything so we'll keep testing out the system as we go got back home checked everything for leaks added a couple more supports went over some of the abrasion points with some tube and some silicone hose um, but other than that the system's up and running it there's no problems with it just have to wait till a hotter day to test it out more um, other than that, it seems to be working just fine. So, I think that's probably going to be it for today, guys. If you uh, like this video, give me a thumbs up. 
hit like. I'd love to have you as a subscriber on my channel. And as always, take care. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Oh, man.